In this screencast, we will develop a transfer function model for a process starting from a material and or energy balance. In this case, we'll focus on an energy balance. So first, we have the problem statement provided. And what we're going to do is as we read this, we're going to develop our diagram of this process. So we have a stirred well-mixed tank, which has volume V. The liquid enters and exits at the same volumetric flow rate F. We are given the fact that heat capacity and density are independent of temperature and pressure. And we're also given the fact that the tank is well insulated, meaning the fact that there's no heat being added or removed from the system. What the question is asking us to do is to develop a transfer function that shows how changes in the inlet temperature, which we'll show here as T in, impact changes in the outlet temperature, T out. So in order to do this analysis, we have to develop appropriate balance. If we were to do a mass balance, what we'd be showing here is that accumulation equals in minus out, where in is F and out is F. So therefore, we're showing the fact that the accumulation is zero and that our mass balance is at steady state, which for our analysis of this process to show how a change in input temperature impacts output temperature really doesn't help us very much. But for our energy balance, we have that accumulation equals in minus out plus the energy from reaction plus energy exchanged with the surroundings. Problem statement does not state anything about a reaction occurring, so we'll assume the fact that there's no energy from a reaction because there is no reaction. And it's also stated that the tank is perfectly insulated, which means the fact that there is no energy change with the surroundings. Therefore, our accumulation can be represented as the inlet enthalpy minus the outlet enthalpy. So recall that enthalpy equals MCP times T minus T ref. So therefore, for our system here, we can state that the inlet enthalpy is going to be the inlet mass multiplied by the heat capacity of the inlet multiplied by T in minus T ref. We can do a similar relationship for the outlet. If you recall in the problem statement, we were given a volumetric flow rate F. But in order to do this analysis, we need to know the inlet flow rate M in. So fortunately, the volumetric flow rate and the mass flow rate can be related via the density, which we said was, was independent of temperature. So we have the fact that this is going to be F in rho in. And we can do the same thing for the second term. What we'll now do is take advantage of a few assumptions, which are the fact that that F in equals F out, and that the density and heat capacities are independent of temperature. So in other words, we don't need the subscripts rho in and rho out. So we can simplify this as F rho CP times T and minus T ref minus F rho CP times T out minus T ref. What we'll notice here is the fact that the T ref terms are going to cancel out identically. And that leaves us with our right hand side as F rho CP multiplied by T in minus T out. Now for the accumulation term, what we want to find is the amount of energy in the tank at a given time. And that will simply be the mass that we have multiplied by the energy per mass, which is the enthalpy. The mass that we have in this system is going to be the volume V multiplied by the density, and then the energy will be the enthalpy, which will just be Cp times T minus T ref. And what we're trying to evaluate here is the change in energy in the tank, since this is the accumulation term, so therefore this will become a derivative, or D this whole thing, dt equals, we can make a few modifications to the left-hand side. t ref is a constant, so therefore dt ref dt will be zero, so that will go away. And we can also take out v, rho, and cp, for those are all constants. And that will leave us with rho v cp dt dt equals f rho cp times T in minus T out. 
But there's one more thing that we have to take into account here, is that when we did our energy balance inside the tank, the temperature here represents the temperature inside the tank. And we know the fact that for our system is well mixed, the temperature of the fluid inside the tank will be the same as our outlet temperature. So therefore, we'll appropriately add the subscript dt out here. In order to get a transfer function model, we need to, to take the Laplace transform of this and rearrange. But before we take the Laplace transform, we want to put this into deviation variables. The reason why is the fact that it'll make subsequent calculations a bit easier because of the fact that in the real differentiation theorem, most of the supplementary terms will be zero. What we can note here is the fact that all variables are first order. So what this means is the fact that all of our variables, which we'll call the domain variable x, can be replaced by their deviation form x prime without other modifications. If we had a t in squared term or a multiplication of t in times t out, for example, our two variables here, we would have needed to linearize this, which would have made it unable for us to evaluate the system so simply. So when we put this into deviation variables, we have rho v cp dt out prime dt equals f rho cp multiplied by t in prime minus t out prime. So when we take the Laplace transform of this, we end up with rho v c p multiplied by the Laplace variable, which I'll indicate with a slightly different looking letter t out prime, multiplied by s equals f rho c p multiplied by the Laplace of the inlet temperature and the Laplace of the outlet temperature. Now that we have taken the Laplace transform of all of our variables, we can now begin to develop a transfer function model. To do this, what we want to do is put our output variables on one side, in this case the s, and we want to put our input variable or variables, in this case we have one, t and prime, on the other side. So when we do this, before we go any further, we're going to make one quick simplification. We could have done this earlier, and that is we're going to get rid of all of the densities and heat capacities because they are, it's present in all the terms. So what we can now do is factor out the t out prime. We're very close to having our transfer function model. In order to get our transfer function model, we will divide both sides by the vs plus f on the left hand side and the t in prime that's on the right hand side. So when we do this, we end up with the left hand side becoming t out prime over t in prime equaling f divided by vs plus f. And this is a transfer function model. But an important point to note here is the fact that this is a non-standard transfer function model. The reason why it is non-standard is because in the denominator, the constant is not 1. It is, in fact, the value f. So if we want to standardize this, we want to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over f. So when we multiply both top and bottom by 1 over f, we'll end up with our transfer function model in standard form. So therefore, we could evaluate the system for if the change to inlet temperature was an instance, for example, an instantaneous increase of 5 degrees Celsius or a ramp of 1 degree Celsius per minute or a rectangular pulse, using this transfer function model, determine how the outlet temperature reacts to these changes.